A news release was brought to my attention that indicated that the government of Guyana had entered into a hush agreement, as it was termed, with the families affected by the Madia tragedy. And I thought to myself that it certainly explains why after 56 days, no commission of inquiry has been constituted. We were told that by the end of last week, the president had, uh, was hopeful that he could name the entire commission. But we see that he has gone off somewhere um, attending some conference, and the commission has not yet been uh, empaneled. But what we learned today is that the affected families have been offered a settlement of five million um, Guyana dollars uh, to compensate them for the loss of their uh, children. This situation certainly raises a number of, of questions and I've noted in the public space as well a press release issued by the Attorney General Anil Nandlal in which he outlined the support that the government would have given to the family providing transportation, providing um, hospitalization uh, and, and care overseas. But I, I want to point out in case the Honorable Nandal has forgotten, that these students died whilst in the care and custody of the state. And so this state has not been doing a favor to the family. These families left their children in the care of the state, trusting that they would be taken care of. So I want the AG to understand but that by enumerating all of these reliefs and assistance that the government would have given to the families, it makes them almost look as if they are expecting uh, these people to be indebted to them somehow, when it is the least that they could do to compensate for the negligence that resulted in these children's um, you know, rather gruesome uh, debts. The other issue that I have is that when you look at the wording of the agreement, and I want to read a particular section of it because I don't want to, um, to misquote it. It says that the government of Guyana hereby offers to the parent slash guardian of the victim the sum of $5 million as a form of financial assistance, which shall constitute a settlement of all claims and causes of actions on account of all injuries resulting in death and not resulting in death that resulted from the fire of the 21st of May 2023 at the Madia Second Secondary School Dormitory. Now you notice how this is worded, that it is issued as a form of financial assistance which shall, and it goes on to say, which shall constitute a settlement of all claims and of all causes of actions on account of all the injuries received. So this goes contrary even to the spirit of the press release that Nandlal has put out. Because when you read that by itself, he wants to convey a government that is magnanimous and that is reaching out. But when you look at the text of the agreement, what they have essentially asked these families to sign is that for $5 million, you will waive your right to any future claim for any injuries resulting from this um, unfortunate incident. So it begs the question, what if when the COI is empaneled, they, found such, they, they find rather such gross negligence on the part of the government? What then? It would appear to me, on first blush, that the terms of this agreement would preclude them from proceeding further. Unless, of course, they can make um, certain legal arguments that you know the the inequality of the bargaining power at the time, the the uncon the unconscionable uh, nature of the agreement, etc., would allow them um, to to have it waived. But that is an unnecessary battle that they will have to fight. And so this is why this government went about stealthily and quietly dealing with these families to have these um, 
agreement signed. I've learned that some families have refused to sign, whilst others have signed. I've learned that the AG said that there was independent legal advice, but based on the conduct of this administration, it's very difficult, unless you hear from an attorney themselves, that they um, were consulted by this family, that indeed they offered legal advice to the family. So this whole situation, it, it really does raise more uh, questions than it provides answers. And it really does indicate that we have a government that intends to deal with the people of Guyana in an unjust manner. And then Anil Nandal has the gall to say that he hopes that this matter is not politicized and it is dealt with in this solemn and dignified manner that it ought to be. And we completely agree that it ought to be de it, it has to be dealt with in a dignified and in a solemn manner. But this is the same government that paraded the survivors of this tragedy two hours after they were um, discharged from the hospital. So this double speak and this double standard that this government continues to employ really is saying to the people of Guyana that we have a government here that they simply do not care. They simply do not care. What about the other survivors who would have had to seek medical attention? What if the injuries that they would have suffered will have some long-term effect in terms of their ability to function normally, which will affect their employability? This clause of this contract seems to suggest, or of this agreement, seems to suggest that they are precluded from claiming anything legally and that whatever they get will be dependent on the largesse of this government. And that is completely unacceptable. The decent way, the right way for this matter to have been dealt with was for a commission of inquiry to be empaneled in the shortest possible time because we need to get to the root cause of the system's failure. What failed? What happened? What were the systems that failed that caused us to lose 20 of our young people in such a horrific manner? The Attorney General's attempt to separate this settlement from the Commission of Inquiry, it's untenable. It can't be separated because these are issues that arise out of one, the one and the same facts and circumstances. And two, this agreement contains a clause that precludes the families from proceeding with any legal action, any cause of action or any such thing. So that it appears to me at first blush that if the COI were to find a tremendous amount of negligence on the part of the government or of some government official, these families have been precluded from proceeding further, barring, like I said, any successful argument that they may be able to make as to unconscionability, etc. So, Adel Nandlal is simply attempting to kerfuffle the people of Guyana. Like I said, this is the reason why 56 days after, we do not have a commission of inquiry and panel because they wanted to take care of all of these issues so that when the commission gets underway, the government is somehow insulated. And the government has to be insulated because they know, they are aware that they failed, that their officers failed, that that school was flagged by the fire service, that dormitory rather, was flagged by the fire service as being a fire hazard. They know what the UNICEF report said about the conditions of dormitories across Guyana. They are aware because this report was put before the cabinet. So they all know, and this is simply an attempt to cover themselves and to cover their ineptitude and inefficiency and, and just their, their, their lack of the ability to govern that resulted in families and Guyana losing 20 of our young promising uh, Guyanese. Finally, uh, did the release say anything about the process and how they came to this five million, came to this amount, was how we got to that agreed sum? It is unclear as to the formula employed 
by the Attorney General, by the government of Guyana, to come to the settlement of $5 million. Like I said, while the AG has said that there was independent legal advice, I am not one to quickly believe anything that this government has said based on their track record. And so in the interest of transparency, people must know how did you arrive at this? This is not uh, something that can be swept under the rug. This is the, the, the greatest human tragedy we have had in Guyana in our recent history. And the government cannot cherry pick what the people of Guyana should and should not be interested in or what they should or should not comment about. What they have to do as a government is handle this thing in a manner that says to any reasonable bystander looking on that yes, this government is dealing with this matter in the best possible manner and they have failed that test. They have not constituted a commission of inquiry. Now we are hearing that they have been going about the place, having their families give up more or less their right to pursue any further legal claim for $5 million. And they're expecting that we will not comment about it, but we will comment about it. We must, as a responsible um, opposition, and as responsible Guyanese, require the government to operate in a particular manner.